Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. There are more cancers being linked to contaminated water. And I wanted to jump into this, bring it to your awareness, so that way you are aware, right? Uh, because oftentimes this stuff is not mailed out to you. You're not getting a phone call. Uh, you need to uh, be on it and understand uh, what you're looking for. So hopefully this lands in the hands of those that need it. With that, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, the two asks are really hitting that thumbs up and letting the video run. That's what tells YouTube to push this information out to more of us. All right. So uh, for those that don't know, started a second channel with a co-host, uh, good channel called Veterans Daily, Veterans Daily. Uh, it's myself and uh, Clay from the Civ Div uh, doing deeper dives into some good content and having some dialogue, the back and forth, which is kind of good uh, to help cement in some ideas for folks. Uh, in addition, if you want to support this channel in other ways, you can do so by becoming a member. You can do that by going to the homepage and you will see the highlighted members and a join button. All right, let's jump into this. More cancers linked to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune. Yee ha. All right. So Thursday, February 1st, 2024, a much anticipated government study finds that military personnel stationed at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina between 1975 and 1985 face at least a 20% higher risk for certain cancers than those stationed elsewhere. So this study came out and it is saying that you are 20% more likely to, uh, to come down with certain cancers. Why the increased risk, you may ask? For decades, the drinking water at the Marine Corps base was contaminated with industrial solvents, federal documents show. When the contamination was first detected in early 1980s, wells on the base were shut down, but not before soldiers and their families had drunk it cooked with it, and bathed in it for years. The contamination has prompted uh, a spat of lawsuits and several studies looking at the health effects of the exposure. Now, here's the thing. You're probably, this is a study. The study is probably going to show, like it did, the 20%. Now, what we'll be looking at is, will the VA be adding presumptive conditions to to the list for Camp Lejeune? So, we'll see. Let's move on in this and see if we can pick up any other nuggets. In the, in the latest research, folks stationed at Camp Lejeune were more likely to develop certain blood cancers and cancers of the lung, breast, throat, esophagus, and thyroid uh, than those stationed at Camp Pendleton in California, where the water had not been contaminated. Civilians who only worked at Camp Lejeune were at higher risk for shorter list of cancers. The study was, con so versus living on base, right? So Obvious, I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but there's two sets, right? You have your folks that work at Camp Lejeune, and maybe you live off base, right? So you're cooking with, bathing with, and all that stuff with other water. Maybe you just get a little bit of water while you're on base um, versus those that uh, are living on base um, and just 24-7, seven days a week, all, all the time, uh, the lovely Camp Lejeune water. So... Uh, moving on, the study was uh, conducted by the U.S. Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention and the Agency for Toxic Substances uh, and Disease Registry. <clears throat> the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has already done numerous studies focused on health problems at Camp Lejeune, among other things. Those studies looked at male breast cancer rates and birth defects in children born to base personnel. Those earlier studies pointed out certain health risks, but the new work more fully establishes the scope of the problem. Richard Clapp, a Boston University uh, public health professor who has worked on past Camp Lejeune research, told the Associated Press. Uh, Dr. Aaron Bernstein, head of uh, the... Um, it's... It's a funny acronym, the ATSDR, at, we'll call it ATSTR, I don't know. The, that's the Agency for Toxic Substances, Substances and Disease Registry, right? So it's going to be that funky, that funky um, acronym, 
we'll call it ADSTER, I don't know. And the CDC's environmental health programs called the new study remarkable, great, for being uh, bigger and more rigorous than past research the AP reported. It's good, but, you know, I mean, now it's just like, really, it's one of those things where you kind of, you, you need to know, but you don't necessarily want to know because now you got to deal with it. So uh, the report is quite impressive, but cannot count as a final proof that the tainted drinking water caused the cancer, said uh, David Savitz, a Brown, Brown University disease, re disease researcher who is consulting for plaintiffs, attorneys, and Camp Lejeune-related litigation. Uh, so now here's the thing. I'm going to throw this in there. However, okay, they're talking regarding the, the plaintiffs, the attorneys, the litigation. That burden of proof is without a reasonable doubt. Let's back away from that for a minute. And let's look at the VA's burden of proof. So it's two different things. Litigation over here, kind of like the earplug thing with 3M, okay? You have litigation over here, and then you have VA claims over here. Two separate things. Litigation, the burden of proof is without a reasonable doubt. VA's burden of proof for your service-connected claims is at least likely as not. A coin flip. 50-50, okay? So I would venture to say that just based on the study alone that your chances are 20 percent higher says the study any doctor who understands that study reads the study gets a snapshot of the study would be willing to write a letter stating that any of the cancers that are in that study would be at least likely as not or if it's 20 percent higher they're probably willing to write a more than likely as a result of your time in service specifically at Camp Lejeune. Uh, so you are going to be able to get nexus letters for these types of cancers. And um, in the event that there's a surviving spouse watching this, that surviving spouse would be able to utilize that report. If the veteran passed away from a cancer in that report, work with the doctor to create that nexus letter, um, whoever the doctor was treating the veteran, uh, to create that nexus letter stating that it is more than likely that it, the cancer was caused from the time at Camp Lejeune, and the rationale is that report, and then that surviving spouse should be able to utilize that for the dependency indemnity compensation. Anyway, I'm getting way off track, but let's circle this back around. So we'll move on. Uh, so that uh, David Savitz, the Brown University disease researcher, uh, added that the new research will add weight to arguments made on behalf of people who got sick after living and working on the base during that time period. In the new study, the horrible acronym, ADSTER, uh, investigated cancer uh, incidents in about 211,000 people who were stationed at or worked at Camp Lejeune between 75 and 85 and compared them to about 224,000 people at California's Camp Pendleton during the same time period. Scientists found a similar number of cancers overall in each group, but uh, there were about 12,000, uh, or in each group, about 12,000. So 12,000 cancers within each group, or maybe that's between the two. I'm thinking it's between each group, so 12 and 12. But the numbers and the relevant uh, uh, relative risks calculated from those numbers were higher at Camp Lejeune population for a number of specific types of cancer. The list included some of what uh, some that weren't clearly identified in earlier studies. This is important, most notably thyroid cancer. Uh, and moving on, it says uh, the new findings may lead to. Uh, inclusion of thyroid cancer in the list of diseases for which Camp Lejeune personnel and their families might one day get compensated, uh, he added. So here's the thing. What they might be talking about there is the presumptive list. So that just makes it easier, right, to get the service connection. However, just the mere fact that there's a study that's stating that in this case, and I didn't read the study, but if it says that your chances of thyroid cancer were higher if you were at Camp Lejeune, you could probably get a nexus letter that says at a minimum that it's at least likely as not that my thyroid cancer came from Camp Lejeune. And the rationale is based on the study, and that's a coin flip. And if your evidence is in equity, oppose equal on both sides the VA is supposed to rule in your favor so with that we'll go ahead and conclude it there happy to report this 
And uh, good luck with everything that you're doing, whether it is litigation or filing a claim with the VA for uh, anyone that served at Camp Lejeune. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.